What's going on, everybody? Spencer McDuffie here, representing the EXP Realty. Uh, today, we've got a super exciting show for you guys. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Rookie Mega Agents. Today, I've got an old school Rookie Mega Agent on the line, Mr. Charles Edwards out of Red Oak, Texas. And today, we're going to be going through uh, his progress in real estate, how he got started, uh, what his come up was like, and he's going to share years worth of tips for all the rookie major, uh, mega agents out there that are looking to take their business up to the next level. So Charles, welcome to the show, man. How you doing? Hey man, I'm doing awesome. Want to make sure you guys see that I am fully branded Charles Edwards Real Estate. You know, got to always let folks know what, what I do. I'm doing awesome. What's up? Man, just chilling. It has been a super, super busy day. I think we have like eight or nine deals, you know, pending right now. So it is crazy. And I'm just trying to keep up. I got to turn my phone off for like an hour while we do this, 30 minutes while we do this, just so I can focus on you and just so I can give some value to the audience. So we're going to make it short. We're going to make it sweet. We're hitting 30 minutes today. Uh, so Charles, man, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, how did you get started in the real estate game? What were you doing? Why don't we take it back further? What were you doing before you got into real estate and what led you into getting into this business? So uh, taking it all the way back, right? I always wanted to do some type of real estate. I'm a, a fan of this guy, Carton Sheets. Uncle Sheets, he actually just passed away. He was the uh, real estate guy on TV, buy real estate, no money down. Um, so as an eight-year-old, um, you know, folks wanted to play football. I wanted to buy some houses with no money down. Um, getting to a more realistic timeline, uh, about, about the time I was 22, I'm 35 now, I got my real estate license because I was selling cars and just wanted a little bit more freedom um so far as time and i got my license and didn't really do anything with it uh went into banking uh insurance and um fell back into real estate when i had a buddy um just say hey um real the real estate market is is, is going really well and um it was definitely my first interest so i, I jumped back in in 2016 of october um and basically started started selling um that's my past all the way up to uh present okay got it got it so got the license didn't really do anything with it let's start there man um you know when you got your license the first time before you went into banking you know working back in the corporate world i guess maybe the sales world for you um you know what happened like why were you not successful the first time what led you to getting out of the business almost immediately after you got in well, uh, working in the car business, it's, um, it's a whole lot more gratifying. You know, you talk to a customer uh, on Monday and you sell them a car on Monday. Uh, you feel like you, you've done something. Uh, real estate, which uh, I started with uh, Keller Williams, which is a great company, great training. Uh, but so far as uh, uh, where my mindset was, I had came from an, an instantly gratifying sales experience right so that was really just a disconnect um you know i was used to having that that check at the end of the month um and in real estate it, it doesn't it doesn't work that way right so that was the biggest disconnect for me and then uh for me um i was 22 and, and uh, my son was you know new and i thought what i wanted more was just a more dependable check. So that right. led me into insurance, uh, which was a, which was and is uh, a, a great business. I still hold my insurance license today. Okay, okay. So looking for some stability, looking for some instant gratification, got into real estate, realized it probably takes you, what, three to six months to close your first deal, and then that wasn't working for you, so went into banking. A buddy told you that you you know need to get back in. The real estate market is popping, so you went ahead and got back in. While in that first little section, that first little time frame before you got out and went back to banking, did you close any deals at all? Yeah, I did. I closed a few friends, um, and quite honestly, um, working in the car business, um, I had a really good manager, a guy named uh, Darius McGottam, and I had some really good people around me, Josh Persher and uh, Kenny. Uh, uh, gosh, I forget the last name, uh, but Kenny, uh, big old buff guy. 
and just had some really awesome uh, um, people around me. So with that being said, uh, Jason Bodar, uh, these guys are all out of uh, Classic Miles and Denton. I made a good amount of money for me and I had a good savings. So um, motivation wasn't there like, it, like I guess like it should have been. Because one of the things you want to do as a real estate agent is have uh, a good amount of money saved up. So if it takes you two months or three months to really get rolling, you can, you can survive. It worked the opposite for me. Uh, I had the cushion. And I was like, oh, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, until I wasn't good, and then I got a job. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, so you so you didn't burn the boats. You know, I did the exact opposite. I, I burned the boats. Well, I guess not, actually. I actually had a savings account, so I'm not gonna yeah. lie and say I didn't, so. Yeah. Um, okay, so you closed a couple of deals in that brief little period that you were in the business. What was that, like a year or two years before you kind of got oh, out? Oh, no, it was months? like three months. I mean, I was, yeah. I got my license and, you know, basically, went through uh, a saving maybe for maybe six months um and you know i did like one deal which again uh another big disconnect uh i had no i i knew no one who actually bought a house like uh, my mother she bought our house from a lawyer through uh owner finance she drove up she saw this house that needed work we contacted the person that you know had that house and that's the only house experience purchase that I knew of. Right. Uh, right. So one one of, one of the big disconnects was it, it wasn't even real to me. Um, so I I had caution sheets <laughs> and yeah. I had my own personal experience of yeah. what real estate was and and um, you know it was just a disconnect that for some reason uh, I I just didn't get it. Right. Uh, and, well, and not for some, not for some it. reason. I mean, it sounds like you basically had never really been around anybody that had actually owned a home before, besides your mom, on a on a kind of lawyer owner finance deal. It wasn't like you grew up affluent, and you know everybody owned houses and everybody had two parents. That wasn't really the way that you saw the world, right? Um, you know, you're going a little uh, deep there. It's just, <laughs> uh, um, I just, you know, like hell, everybody in my neighborhood had a house. Right. So again, the only transaction that I had been a part of, mind you, my mom bought our house when I was five. Right. Um, you know, so we, I can't even count that as a transaction that I, right. that I was a part of. So again, it was just not real to me. That's my, that's my excuse. I mean, mostly okay. it was just probably just being lazy because I had some money in the account yeah. and I didn't have the motivation to, to really learn the business. Right, uh, right. I, well, think, I think an eighteen-year-old or a twenty-year-old can 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 kick butt and um, you know, make it happen. Yeah, yeah. Well, I definitely don't want to put words in your mouth, uh, but yeah, I, I get you. And I think a lot of agents go through the same thing. And you know, their mindset essentially is kind of what you're saying, and then your work ethic is really what it boils down to. You need to have both in check in order to get off the ground and become a boss ass, you know, rookie mega agent. Um, yeah. Uh, and, and okay, and you said a mouthful. Your your mindset and excuses. Um, anybody can do well, uh, and there is there is not a reason why you can't do well. Uh, right. I know for a fact you sit on the phone and make phone calls. Uh, you are on this Zoom call with me. Uh, you um, inspire me with all of the information that you're pumping out to the public, letting people know what you do. Uh, me uh, going into business 2016, I really was just um, letting folks know what I do, my, my sphere of influence. Right. And um, that is, is, is who I was able to help. Uh, and by that time, I had purchased uh, two houses. Um, so I, I, I knew more about real estate. And by that time, I had flipped a house, um, which kind of led me into really um, understanding what the real estate process was, was about. Uh, right. and again, um, I had more friends uh, talking about it every day. I can't talk about real estate without mentioning my buddy, Justin Briscoe. Um, we've done a lot of things together from mowing yards to working at AT&T to, you know, now flipping houses. At one point he worked for Coldwell Banker and another uh, firm. Um, long story short, the flipping houses in 2014, uh, house, 
and uh, then really getting involved in it in around 2016 with a with a buddy of mine, Aaron Thomas, AT, um, really got me buying and selling and being more exposed to more folks. Right, right. So basically flipping houses. So that's what I want to do too right now is I want to go, you know, fast forward a little bit. We know where you came from. We know you kind of struggled a little bit in your first couple months in the business, didn't do a whole lot of business. And now you're doing, you know, tell, tell the audience a little bit about what you got going on now. Like how, how many deals are you doing? You know, as much information financially as you feel comfortable sharing, you know, give us some information about what your production has gone from when you first started to where you're at now. Okay. And I mean, I've took a full circle. So uh, last year, um, I was really focused on selling houses. And um, I, I probably did, um, I don't know, 45-ish houses and maybe um, seven to 10 flips during that time. Um, and I, and, and it, just one in one year, you did 45 houses and seven flips? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. And so, and then, um, you know, this year, um, and okay. And during that time, I also gained some rentals. So this year, um, I'm doing way less sales. Like I've probably got it six months into the year. I think I've got maybe 10 homes that I've actually sold or listed maybe 15. I don't know. Right. Uh, but <clears throat> right now, halfway into the year, I'm upwards close to 20, um, like flips and, um, not, and within that 20, seven of those are, are new bills. Right. Um, so I, I shifted focus and that's something that I think we all should really, uh, be talking about as a real estate agent a lot of real estate, uh, guys get into the business to be investors and to have more, you know, inside knowledge. So for me, uh, because I have done both um, continuously, I, I'm really, I would say I'm really good at both, but at the same time, that can be a dangerous ground to, to play on uh, when you're uh, losing focus of one or the other. Right. Uh, I've done it for so long, I've got a really good separation, but at the same time, I would say if you are a um, new real estate investor or agent, uh, do one or the other, get a business plan that works, and then add to uh, the business that, that next piece. It'll be, you know, you'll have the other one down packed uh, so much better where you can add on top uh, this additional business. Right, right, right. So you killed it, man. And you've been in the business now for what, four years, five years? Yeah, I guess that's four years, right? 2020 yeah. uh, of October will yeah. be four years. Okay. Okay. So basically in four years, you went from your first year doing like one deal in your first six months, quitting the business, uh, eventually getting yeah. back in. What was that? Maybe a year later you got back in? No. Remember I was 22. I'm 35 now. So I okay. Was so it was a long break. Yeah, it was a long break. And I yeah. kept my, I think I actually even kept my license <laughs> active. Just kept paying for it. Right. Um, or inactive or whatever. So basically, it, just in the last few years alone, I mean, you got back into the business almost as a true rookie agent again, picked up some experience mm -hmm. while you were out and then scaled your business, you know, from one deal to, you know, 45 deals and, and some and seven flips. And then the next year, you know, 20 sales and, and, and or, or 20 flips and a little bit of less sales. So you're growing your business, you know, exponentially, clearly. And it, it looks like based on your current projection, you're definitely scaling down on the sales and getting more into flips. So talk to us a little bit about that. You know, we got some agents out here that don't really have a long-term game plan on what they're going to do with their business. And are they going to be in sales forever? A lot of people want to be investors. What's your long-term goal? And, um, and, and then once we get that long-term goal, I definitely want to circle back and, and, and ask you, you know, how did you do this? But, but first off, where are you planning on going with, with these flips and these rentals and these new builds? So uh, in a perfect world, basically flipping, flipping homes to, um, have a, have a bulk of cash to be able to, uh, build or rehab a couple of homes with a high equity position. Um, keeping all of that flip money in a business to roll it back to, um, rentals again, that have a very high, uh, equity position. And the reason why I keep saying that was my goal was to be in homes at a 70 to 80% of ARV and have a, I guess, 
um, is that a low, low equity uh, yeah. position in it? I was only sitting at 20% equity to 30%. And the problem with that is if anything goes wrong, um, that could be your profit for the year right. or that could be, um, you know, just tough. Right. So um, instead of going for uh, 20 homes in a year, I went for four in a year, you know, that are, that are, that are paid for or right. being a very, uh, high equity situation. Right. So my long term goal is to have rental properties that are that are paid for forever. Uh, and then secondly, um, or not second, but on top of that, um, of course, EXP. Um, I left the company that I was with, that was a one of the a flat fee brokerage, because EXP offers a um, um, how do you say they offer a program, a, a revenue, a, a revenue share program when you tell people about the business right. um, and they come and join like you did, you make a little bit of, uh, of rev share. And the great thing about that is simply when you have a house that's a rental, you get tenants, <clears throat> toilets, problems or whatever. Rev share, uh, you tell somebody about a great opportunity like Spencer, who's the boss at Selling Real Estate, Grayson County, Collin County. Um, you know, I don't have to deal with problem tenants and toilets and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and when you attract an agent with EXP, they may never they may never call you or need anything from you. But uh, again, I look at EXP like every person that I attract to the company is like having a rental without having all of the headache and insurance right. and taxes and and all of those things. So right. long term, um, I want to have that passive income. Right. Uh, I want to have my rentals and I want to build my company up as much as I can because they're, they are rewarding me. Yeah. Uh, and, and I, and I like it. Okay. Okay. So what, so let me ask you this before we get into the how and the nuts and bolts and the final tips, cause I know you're busy and you got to get off this call, you know, in 15 minutes or so, uh, I'm watching the clock for you, man. I got, I got you back. Um, so would it be fair to say that you would say you would call yourself, you know, a productive agent at one time who eventually made the decision to scale down their real estate business? Is that what, is that what you're telling us and rather focus on passive income? Um, I, yes. I mean, that's, that's a good way to put it. Um, uh, I'm not turning down any business. Right. Um, you know, I'm not, uh, actively paying for, uh, any lead sources right now. Um, so when I was more active, I was using realtor.com. Uh, I was using Zillow. People, you know, talk noise about Zillow, um, you know, as a buyer's agent, which again, I fell into that trap of being a buyer's agent, which I like. Um, but as a buyer's agent, I think Zillow is a, a really good platform to get in front of folk uh, right. to help, help them get in, in, into a home. Right, right. So that's a really unique perspective, I think, for the rookie agents out there, uh, the rookie mega agents audience, you know, everybody, including myself, I feel like gets into this to this tunnel vision, you know, reality of I got to sell 100 homes a year, I got to sell 500 homes a year. And I think you've been through the game long enough to see that there might be something else to this equation. I've been in the game long enough, to, only two years to know, man, you know, selling real estate is a grind. And there's got to be like, if you're super productive selling 60 to 75 homes a year, there's got to be something that's got to be a little bit easier, right? Because this is not easy to do to sell that, that amount of homes and that kind of thing. So I think you're probably the first person, definitely the first person we've ever had on a show that has ever mentioned anything about, you know, scaling down their real estate business and putting a little more focus on, um, you know, rentals and, and building up passive income through, through rentals and, and rev shares. So does that sound like a reasonable summary there? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. All day long. Right. So that's an interesting point that I think the audience should take in. I think there's more to the world and there's more to the world of real estate than just out there grinding, knocking doors, picking up the phone and like and slanging houses. At the end of the day, you're starting, you're giving yourself a base salary and most agents don't have that or even have that in the plan. You know, there are, we're all on the eternal hamster wheel until we put something else in place to get some passive income coming in. I think rentals and obviously EXT rev share, I think that's a, a fantastic strategy. So 
what I want to do then is circle back, like I said, and, you know, tell us what you did, you know, especially for my rookie agents, they're just getting started, you know, they might not even be thinking about rentals and stuff like that right now. But what did you do to build your real estate agent up, uh, business up and, and your investing business too, because they're, you know, they're one and the same, but what did you do to start going from like, basically no deals uh, to really, you know, now doing 60 plus deals a year between flips and rentals and, you know, agent sales and all that. Like, how did you get the business? So again, the no deals were due to be not working. I mean, that's right. all it was to it. Um, and so what I did differently was I went to work. There, <laughs> there is no, there is no, you know, magic bullet, whether you're using Zillow, realtor.com or whatever, you've got to pick up the phone. You've got to set appointments. You've got to say yes. You've got to know, you know, when to say no right. uh, and be able to work with people who will listen. Right. Um, we do this, um, you know, all day, every day, and we're, we're comfortable with it. So that's the difference. Um, right. When I was 22, I simply didn't work. And when I was 31, I, I you know, kind of burned the boats or, you know, whatever. And yeah, I quit my job without a notice, which again, Texas Foreign Bureau was the company that I left. Great company, great uh, manager out there, Paxton Hurst. Uh, great sales uh, person. I, I use a lot of the things he, he taught. Uh, so far as taking care of clients. But again, that that is the only difference is I I went from, um, I guess, not needing to and or even wanting to, to, to wanting to. Right. Uh, uh, working, working with people who want to be worked with, working with people that understand the value of working with an agent that has, has experience um, right. buying and selling and flipping homes. So okay. if you okay. like my... If, folks like my value, then I was able to, then I was able to get them to where they wanted to be at. Right, right, right. So I want to go just a little bit deeper, if you don't mind, and dig into this, because I, you yeah. know, these, these agents are, are brand new on this channel. My, my agent is target, my channel is targeted to rookie mega agents. So you went to work, mm -hmm. you know, you put the excuses behind you. That's, that's a major deal. And obviously you had online leads, but like, what were you actually doing when you went to work? Was it, was it mostly online leads? Was it mostly Zillow? Was it mostly realtor? Were you doing expires? Were you doing FISBOs for your flips? Were you, you know, doing foreclosures? Like what lead sources were you working? Uh, so lead sources working were uh, Zillow, simply setting appointments, uh, and then Sphere of Influence, um, you know, talking to them, telling them about the process, telling them that they do have the ability to purchase a home, mm -hmm. and, and, and going from there, setting the appointment, showing right. houses, opening doors, uh, you know, I hear a lot of agents put up all, a lot of these barriers before they, you know, show a home. I've had clients that I showed a home to in, you know, 2018, and we didn't close onto a house until the end of 2019. Right. You know, sometimes I think that you have to open a door right. uh, so they can so, so they can know it's real. Right. Um, and then sometimes people just need a little bit more uh, information. So right. again, I went to work. And I stopped putting barriers up uh, to meet people. Right. Um, you know, again, and, and depending on what market you are, you're in, and 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 and, and your skill set. And um, you know, my thing was, I wanted, I, I knew anybody and everybody could purchase a house if they really wanted to. That, and that and that's the truth. That's always the truth. They may not be able to purchase it the way they want to purchase it with zero down, like you can do. They may have to put, you know, three and a half percent down because of credit. They may have to put down 25 percent down because of credit. Um, but I knew that anybody and everybody could purchase a home. So I really learned to just get in front of people uh, because my background is in, in banking. Uh, I had those financial conversations with people and I really understand the lending part of it. So I would get in front of them and say, no, you are fine. We are good to go. It may not be right now, but it, it's going to be three months from now. It may take a year, but it will happen. So um, I really made sure I got in front of people, set the appointment, uh, set the expectation of, hey, you can buy a house. Because that's the truth. You can right. buy a house. Um, so that was, that was the work that I put in was right. uh, I was setting appointments with people. That's it. Setting appointments that's with it. people, letting them know the process getting folks comfortable and, and do it over and over and over again. 
Right, right, right. So that's pretty simple. I mean, you're talking about setting appointments. You can text your sphere. You can call your sphere. You can message them on Facebook. You can door knock strangers. You can, you know, talk to people in the line at Walmart. You know, there's a million things you can do. So for the audience who are looking for, you know, specific actions, I think he's summing it up really clearly. Just talk to someone in some way. I think that's basically There you what go. Just- <laughs> there you go. You, you talk to someone and tell them what you do. If they need to do something, for example, when I paid my water bill, I could have easily paid my water bill online when I moved to Red Oak, but I said, hey, I'm going to go meet the people at the water department. The lady I spoke to, I paid my bill, um, and this is sad, but um, her realtor passed away the day that I walked into the building, and she was in need of selling her house, and um, I had gave her my card and told her I was the greatest thing since sliced bread, and, uh, you know, at the time, I didn't know that the phone call that she was on was her realtor passing away. Wow. Um, so I was like feeling bad when I walked out because I was like, man, you know, I was too happy and all of this thing. And this lady was going through something. But I didn't know. She right. calls me back a couple of days later and said, hey, you know, the reason why I was feeling some type of way is, you know, my realtor who sold me my house passed away and I need to sell. I'm still in contact with that lady right now. She sold her house. She ended up leasing a, a, a home. And uh, just basically getting her financial house in place. Right. Um, but I talked to that lady uh, instead of doing it online. I mean, you can't be a secret agent if you're a realtor. You you've got to let people know what you do. So um, that that is that is my plan. I mean, if you like dealing with people like I do, that's the way I do it. I don't really do a lot of phone calls. I don't really have like a power hour or a power four hours. Uh, I just constantly let people know. Uh, right. that I sell real estate. See that right there? I don't yeah, have a shirt yeah. without my name on it. If I ever forget my name, I just can look down, boom, my name is Charles Edwards. You know? I roll around I roll around branded up too, man, all, all the time. That's what you got to do. And I'm the opposite, man, because... Uh, all day long. <laughs> I like to turn mine off, man. So I'm very much the opposite. Like I go in and I call three, four hours a day a lot of the time. And then when I go to Walmart, man, I don't want to talk to the person that's in front of me. I really don't like that's just my personality i kind of like to just kind of be silent and i don't want to talk to you because i feel like it's a little bit awkward in, in walmart but when you start doing so much like we're doing with the calls and the social media and all this doing all this business at that point people at where i'm at people just come up to me and they start talking about real estate constantly i can't hey, go to a restaurant guy. yeah yeah so anyways so we got about five minutes left on the call here mr charles and um if you could give the rookie mega agent audience some a few tips, like anything that you feel like maybe mistakes that you learned in the past that you can pass on to help people not make the same mistakes or some tips to jumpstart their business, uh, what what advice would you give for somebody that's like brand new, just got their license three weeks ago and wants to hit the ground running? Um, get to work. Call folks. Let them know what you do. It's very simple. Let folks know what you're doing. Um, the biggest thing that you can do as an investor is hire a property management company. Um, if you, if you're going to be a realtor and an investor, uh, there's only so many things that you can do. Great. Um, let someone else manage your properties. Um, right. that'll allow you to keep doing what you're great at, which is, uh, finding great deals for people and yourself. And um, your, your tenants will have a go-to dedicated person that they can reach out to for whatever, whatever um, they need. Uh, secondly, don't be afraid to pour money back into your investment. Um, I really wanted to have all of my stuff highly, highly leveraged. Um, and I would say, no, we don't need to do that. Right. Take your money that you're making and put it back into your investment. Let that thing get, you know, paid off or are very close to being paid off uh, because you're, you're paying yourself. You know, right. you know you're, you're, you're just putting your money into a better, um, you're putting your money into a better vehicle than a savings account. Right. Uh, that's, that's, that's all you're doing is increasing the uh, amount of principal that you're, um, um, paying into and decreasing right. the amount of interest. So um, again, rookie agents go out, sell as much as you can, believe in your real estate, buy real estate, pay that real estate down, um, get great tenants who have uh, good credits. Don't buy sad stories. Um, so 
didn't I, I didn't mention that. So uh, for this last one minute, two minutes, um, make sure Spencer ends this. But um, I'm a I'm a good-hearted person, and I believe in people. But boy, people will take advantage of you and give you their sad stories. And um, you know they're out I don't know drinking and you know barbecuing or whatever it may be, and they're not paying rent. Right. And uh, I'm the type of person that if you tell me a lie. I'm going to, I'm going to believe it, even though I know it's a lie. I'm going to be like, you know, this person is in an uncomfortable situation, whatever it may be, they're going to do right one day. Right. If you are a good hearted person, you probably need to have a property manager. Right. Um, I, I heard from a, um, another landlord is real hard to be a Christian, a Christian and a landlord. <laughs> uh, you'll be, you'll be broke real fast. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Hey, I, I, Jesus wants his tithes, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes. indeed, indeed, indeed. Hey. I am not Jesus. I, I am not Jesus. Yeah. I just, I, I'm just a good hearted person and I, I believe in people's lives. Oh, hey, you got to know your uh, you got to know your strengths and weaknesses, man. If you're not an enforcer, you know, then how are you an enforcer? There's a reason that celebrities have bodyguards. You know, there's a, there's somebody that needs to do that job, you know. Um, so, Charles, we're real close to the end of this call, man. The last thing I want you to do is obviously you're running a successful business. You're, you're recruiting. You're doing the XP. You're training new agents. Guys, Charles trained me and is still training me. I called him 20 minutes ago to ask him a question before we hopped on this call about real estate. And he's an excellent trainer. You know, he's got me to where I am, which is on track to do 60 deals my second year in the business. He can help you guys too. You know what I mean? So Charles, if there's somebody out there that's looking for a mentor or they're maybe considering, uh, you know, maybe they just want to pick your brain. You know what I mean? Uh, mm -hmm. What can they do to get in contact with you to, you know, ask you questions about rentals and uh, fix and flip and uh, being an agent? You know, is there, what's the best way to get in contact with you? Let me give you my phone number. It's two one four two zero zero one nine six one text me uh you know i don't want any crying ass excuse making uh people calling me i'm out on that right um I've, I've i've dealt with that before and you know i thought that with anyone you can make a difference with and that's not that's not that's not the case so check yourself before you call me i definitely don't have time for for those type of people but i do have time for the people who want to help people uh, make a difference in their life. I do have time for, for people who want to work hard. I do have time for people who want to make a great income and impact uh, families. Uh, I, I do have time for that. I don't have time for excuses. Not at all. Don't, right. don't call me with that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Number. One more time. 214-200-1961. It's easy. Yeah. Text me. Text I'd love to hear me. from you. Text him, man. Get get the good information, man. Charles was pivotal in getting me off the ground when I just joined DXP. He he hooked it up in a major way for me, man. Took me from zero to hero, and now I'm one of the top producing producing agents in my county. You know, doing you know what he said along with other mentors too. He doesn't get all the credit. You know, there was other people that have absolutely too. not, <laughs> absolutely not. And you know, while Spencer's over here blowing me up, uh, I call Spencer all the time, and I was like, man, how are you doing that? How are you selling so many people's houses at top of the market in a time where a lot of agents are sitting on their hands and crying COVID? Um, this guy is not an excuse maker. Um, so again, you know, here, here, I'm. When you go ask for help, you just, you just ask for it and be willing to listen to it and understand if you can do it. Uh, if you can't, move on. But uh, this guy, if you're in Grayson County. Um, I, I, there is absolutely no one else out there who can uh, sell your house better, represent you uh, better as a buyer's agent. One thing about Spencer, I know, I, I wish I had more of it. This man does not waste time. He does not waste time with people who want to waste his time. Uh, sometimes I'm listening to him on the phone. And I'm like, man, you should be a little nicer. But um, he, he, he takes care of people and get and get them what they want and that is the that is that is what's important is getting folks to the finish line um so again if you really want to work with somebody who's going to take care of you then then he's the guy he is the guy all day long twice on sunday <laughs> well hey man i appreciate that for sure and in the spirit of not wasting time let's wrap this show up look up charles on instagram uh be sure if you're watching on youtube comment like and subscribe and be on the look uh, lookout for the next video 
we'll holler at you guys later. Hey, 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 I'm old school. You're going to find me on Facebook. I don't got no, I got the Instagram. I ain't going to check it. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. Well, if you're looking for me, hit me on freaking uh, TikTok. I'm everywhere, man. So uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Rookie Mega Agents, I really appreciate you guys tuning in. I hope you got a lot of value out of the show. Uh, let me know how I can be of service to you and uh, be on the lookout for a ne another show next week. Talk to you guys later.